Man, oh man, I hope you guys strap up because this is an interesting video. It may be one of the most interesting videos I've done to date. Is YouTube golf taking over PGA Tour golf? Or maybe have they already done it? Today we're gonna get into that topic, guys. This is gonna be so interesting. Stay along, I hope you guys strap up because it's go time. It's go time, baby. Sam Mayer Golf Co. We love to see it, baby. SamMayerGolfCo.com. Sickest hats on the planet. Let's freaking go. The first question is, will YouTube surpass the PGA Tour on TV ratings? Now, this is gonna be an interesting topic here today because right now in the world of social media, things have started to change up just a little bit. When I mean a little bit, I mean a lot of it. Here we go. So YouTube and PGA Tour are great, great forms of golf content. And I would say the best forms, but they have some key differences. And I mean major key differences and people are starting to notice. If you guys are new here, my name's Luke Peavy. Welcome to my channel. Like, subscribe, most importantly, hit that notification bell because bangers every week, baby. I'm just gonna start this off with a banger, and this is a staggering fact. A huge fact. Massive fact. Are you guys ready for this? Let me pull up my computer. God, this is so interesting. First of all, I'm gonna start off with YouTube Golf, and then I'm gonna show you the PGA Tours stats. This is so interesting. We're gonna look at the two biggest golf channels on YouTube. That would be Good Good and Rick Shields. Luke PV. Here we go, Good Good alone brings in 350,000 views per day, totaling 2.45 million views per week. And this is this year, 2023, through the first two weeks of 2023. These are the facts. 350,000 per day. Then we have Rick Shields, who is bringing in another 300,000 per day, equaling 2 million views per week. So just in the start of 2023, these guys have totaled over, let's see, close to 9 million views already halfway through the month of January. 9 million. And that is just two channels. That doesn't even include any of the other golf channels. Peter Finch, Busta Jack, Brian Bros. Mine's still small, but maybe that it's like a 0.5 percentage of views. Your favorite YouTube golfer, who you guys like, they probably get a decent amount of views. And it just adds up because you could watch two to three different YouTube golfers. So that is a staggering fact to me that it is already this close. PGA Tour this year. Like this isn't even like a competition. It's more like showing the facts of what's going on right now and how the game of golf is literally evolving in front of our eyes. PGA Tour this year has already seen declines in their viewership. Uh, golf TV ratings on Twitter, they do a great job of this. The first tournament of the year had 321,000 viewers, 24% down from last year. That is a lot. And then Friday was 398, a good, good video, and then you watch a Rick Shields video. Just right there, you have double of what the PGA Tour did on those days. The latest, I think, let's see, weekends, obviously people have off so they can watch a little bit more TV. There was 603,000 viewers. Even lower was last week, literally this past week, 274,000 viewers on the Sony Open in Hawaii. And even Liv commented, or actually Liv Golf updates, so it's not really Liv, but they said, as a strong advocate for growing the game of golf, it pains me greatly to see that the Thursday viewership of the Century Tournament of Champions was down 25%. I hope this trend does not continue. Not great. And that's true. We do not need to see down, but it's just YouTube golf is going up to where people are starting to notice on the bigger level, PGA Tour and Live, things are getting a little tricky here. Now, let's just talk about Live Golf. They don't have TV rankings, so we just based off of their YouTube. I'll put up the screenshot here. 117,000 was their biggest one. Wow. Let's just sit on that one for a minute. That is crazy how everything has changed 
like this since 2020. Craziness. So what's the biggest difference right now between PJ Tour and YouTube Golf? You know, I would say money, but it's quickly changing. The gap is starting to close more and more each day as the bigger brands are starting to notice this trend. And example, good, good. They just signed a huge contract. And the more and more YouTube Golf becomes popular, the more and more money that will be dumped into the YouTube Golf world. This is, this is just blowing my mind because I'm like, I haven't researched YouTube golf. I don't think anybody's really researched this unless brands are doing it. That's why brands are starting to reach out to all YouTube golfers, it's craziness, man. So this kind of seems weird, but YouTube golfers are starting to get bigger brand deals than PGA Tour players. Example, good, good. I would go to figure that this was a multi-million dollar contract. I know for sure it has to be at least that much. Why are the brands doing this now? YouTube golfers build a more loyal and more engaging audience than the PGA Tour as it's just performance based. People want to see a little bit more than a performance. Also, it shows that it aligns with their personality and their personal brand. So it's easy to promote such a brand. Like for example, I'm with PXG. I'm not a PGA Tour golfer. I wouldn't have thought this in the past years, but I completely believe it now. If I was trying to make the PGA Tour, which I want to become the best golfer I can, but if I was trying to do that, it would be much harder for me to get a brand sponsor based off performance than it is with my personal brand and building this YouTube channel. It's crazy because I like to have fun. I've been blessed to actually have the opportunity to have signed with a club company, PXG, Shout out PSG, I love them. But it's crazy that you can actually do this and you're not a pro golfer. So what does this mean for the PGA Tour? Viewership is down. PGA Tour, you're watching this. Hello. This means that you need to involve more YouTube golfers. Looking at the facts right here, the community is very strong in each and every YouTube golfer. Now they've kind of started doing this on a lower level. I know that Busta Jack and Micah Morris actually worked with the PGA and they did some commentary at the one, I think the FedEx, but I think that was FedEx that reached out to them. It was either FedEx or PGA Tour, one of the two. PGA has a lot of restrictions. That's one of the biggest things that PGA needs to kind of let go a little bit of, or they're gonna let loose a lot of it on their viewership. So let's look at the why. Why have people started watching YouTube golf pretty much the same, if not more than PGA Tour golf. And it's just not the younger generations. It's also the older generations. It's not just your 18 year old kids watching the videos. However, there are a lot of junior golfers that watch under their parents' account. So I know that goes into account, but the younger generation is coming up on YouTube golf. They are not used to watching PGA Tour golf. I have talked to kids and they say, no, I don't watch any PGA Tour golf which is crazy to me because I was like, what, you don't watch any? And personally, I really don't watch any either. The only time I watch is if Tiger Woods is playing or it's major week. So that's only four times out of the year. And then Tiger, if he's playing, there's personality, there's fun and storytelling elements. You get behind the story of me and you don't just see a performance based off me. The personality behind shooting the 72 is worth more than just watching a guy shoot 72. Now, given if you see a guy shoot 62, yeah, people wanna watch that. But not everybody can do that on a daily basis. Which brings me to daily basis. Speaking of that, you can watch your favorite YouTube golfer every day if you want to, if you haven't already binge watched his whole channel, which if you guys wanna do that, go watch them. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you don't have to do that. But you can literally watch hundreds of videos on somebody's channel if they have them. But PGA Tour is literally just on the weekends. So if you miss it, yeah, you may catch the highlights, but it doesn't give you a story behind the highlights. So the shift from PGA Tour to YouTube Golf, it's a lot to do with the shift in social media. Social media is bigger than ever and people want an instant thing. However, there is a capability that the PGA Tour could help out with. And that is if they brought YouTube golfers into the PGA Tour space. Now, however, that has been 
going on lately. So there's been some brands that have actually started to work with PGA Tour players and working with YouTube golfers. This is a genius idea because when you get the combo, that is when you're gonna have bigger, bigger things happen because the rise of social media is here and it's probably gonna stay like a long, long time. So what's some fun things they could do? They could do some social media challenges or they could do a tournament, a YouTube golf tournament. I've been saying that for years now. It's gotta happen. Maybe I can get the PGA Tour if you guys watch this. What's up? Let's do it. Let's freaking do it. Come on, baby. Let's freaking go. Hey, hey, let's go. Or you could do online qualifying rounds to a tournament. I just wanted to say this and make this a topic because I was seeing it unfold under my own eyes. And I know you guys are noticing it too. Brands are noticing it. Everybody's noticing it. This could get crazy. And I think this is just the tip of an iceberg. This is just the start of it. I mean, we're at the beginning stages of it. So the next few years are gonna get crazy and things are gonna start swapping up a lot. Let me know in the comments what you guys think will happen in the next few years on this topic. So I love you guys. Thank you for subscribing. And PGA Tour, can you give me something? Bangers every week. Let's freaking go.